trending higher. We're going to begin today's show with an exclusive, important interview with Warren Buffett and Congressman Scott Bridgel. You may remember that just last week, Congressman Bridgel made it official to be the only lawmaker to answer Buffett's challenge to pledge some of his earnings to pay down the national debt. Now, let's take you out to Omaha, Nebraska, where Betty Lou is standing by. Betty? Margaret, thank you very much. I am standing by here and joined by Warren Buffett, the billionaire investor, and of course, a Republican Congressman Scott Ridgel from Virginia, who uh, came in last night to meet with Buffett this morning over breakfast to talk about a very lofty topic, which is how to pay down the national debt. Uh, first of all, uh, gentlemen, you know, I know you had a, quite a long discussion over breakfast. So let me ask you first, you know, uh, did you go, come away, Congressman, with any firm plans from Warren about how to pay down the debt? Bring back well, we certainly have a, a lot in common. I, I certainly appreciate uh, Warren's gracious hospitality here. Um, he, in his letter to me, said, Scott, I'm, I'm certain that we agree on this point, uh, that uh, we've got to reduce our spending and also increase revenue. And uh, I certainly agree with that. I, you know, the, the percentages might have been off just a point or two, okay. but, there, but there was overlap. So uh, these are just kind of common sense numbers that I think that uh, we need to rally around. Warren, do you wish that more would have stood up like Congressman Ridgell to your, uh, to your challenge? Yeah, but it's more than it's more than that. It's it, it's really it's really uh, what I really admire about Scott is I mean he's dedicated to uh, to getting a sensible relationship between revenue and expenses in this country, and uh, it's a tough issue to face. Uh, he and I uh, in the first five minutes. Uh, found we were within fractions of a point virtually. Uh, we, we both feel that, you know, we can tolerate a very uh, small gap between the two, but we know that we need more revenues and we need, we know that we have to bring down expenses and we know it has to be right. believable and, 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 it, and, it, and it has to be uh, attacked right now. But if it was so easy for you two gentlemen to come together and find even just, you know, almost, you know, almost very similar common ground, why do you think it's so difficult in Washington? Well, it, it Part of it's uh, neither side wants to move first. Uh, the, the, the Democrats don't want to talk about expenditures, to, and, and the Republicans don't want to talk about revenues. And you know they, they have their own constituencies, and they don't want to break ranks with each uh, with their own comrades and all. It's just it's human dynamics, uh, but it has to be done, and and everybody agrees it has to be done. Yes. Right. Uh, but yeah. Scott w wants to do it, <laughs> and and he wants to do it now. And, uh, you know, I, I joined you, him with that. But, but in a way, Warren, I mean, your challenge was you were trying to sort of break that, right? Well, that was more symbolic, uh, Betty. I mean, it, the, that, that's, it, it's not going to, when we have a $1.2 trillion deficit, contributions aren't going to make a big difference. But it would, I think the American public wants to see a sign of any kind, almost, mm -hmm. that the members of Congress take this as seriously as they should. And, right. and it's, it's, so it's symbolic, and it says, we're going to get to work on this. And, and it, isn't, it isn't that the contributions are going to amount to anything significant. No, not by value, it. but it draws attention Correct. to it. It draws attention to it. And, it. and it's the American public, they need a sign. Yeah. <laughs> they, they want to believe in Congress, and they don't believe in Congress. Uh, right. and, and, and they see this most important of issues getting pushed off and each side blaming the other. And, I don't want to look back at all. I just want to look forward, you know, and, and, and Scott's the same way. Well, well, Congressman, I mean, are you disappointed that more Republicans haven't stood up and done the same thing as you? No, I, I, we are headed in the right direction, I think, uh, in, in, certainly in the Republican conference, and I hope across uh, both, both sides of the aisle there, and recognizing that leaders have got to rise up, that we must lead by example. Uh, you know, to Warren's point, when I was giving back 15% of my salary last year, I, I'm a 30-year businessman, so I, I was under no illusion that that in and of itself was going to change our fiscal uh, course, right. even if matched by every member of Congress. But it's the principle of leadership by example that I learned at Paris Island a <laughs> long, long time ago from those the young Marine drill instructors. Right. Yes. There's not one thing that those drill instructors ask of us that they, they did not first do themselves and model. Mm -hmm. So I think our leaders have to model really where we want to go. And for me, it was to give back 15% and, and decline a range of benefits. And um, I'm hopeful, I'm really hopeful, and I appreciate Warren having me out today, that this will uh, help elevate this topic of congressional reform, right. of uh, aligning congressional benefits with what is commonly available in the private sector. 
You know, Warren Congressman says, you know, leading by example and, you know, taking 15% of his gross salary. I just am curious for, for, you know, for theory's sake, I mean, what if you donated 15% of your salary to the Treasury? I don't have much of a salary, but 15% <laughs> of my income. 15% uh, of your yeah, income, I, I mean. It, I would love, you know, I mean, if you could get a significant percentage of the of the Congress to do that, you know, I, I'd do it to it. And I'll, I'll, I'll say this, if, if, if out of... 435 in the House and, 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 and the additional in the Senate. If, 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 if 50 of them would do it, you know, I'd do it. If 50 of them would do it, then, yeah, then you it. would donate 15% yeah. of your yeah. income. So then. if 10% 10, 10 of Congress, roughly, you know, between the... Uh, right. Sure. About sure. Yeah, and, a, and a twist on that is this. When I'm in the second district of Virginia, which is uh, the southeast corner, beautiful section of the country, and I'm talking to, to my friends and to folks all across the district, I'll so often hear this, Scott, I would pay a bit more. I would be. I wouldn't be excited about it, but I would, if I truly believed that it would reduce the deficit. In some ways, that's what you were asking me the other day. Right. Exactly. You said, How do you know where that money's going? Um, so I think if we, all of these things have to come together really at one at one time, that people have confidence that we truly have arrested the spending trajectory in a wise way that meets our obligation to seniors, right. to those who need the, the greatest degree of care and support, uh, and at the same time, uh, you know, puts us on a much, much better fiscal path. But contributions can't, are never going to be a significant part of solving the problem. We need policy, and we need, mm. we need it now, and, and, and the symbolism may be important, and certainly it may, it may shout out to the American public, you know, that we're going to ask a lot of you, mm -hmm. you know, so we're willing to be the right. first in line. Uh, but. Policy changes are what are needed. I mean, uh, you can't get away from that. And and Scott and I basically agree on where we need to end up. And and we probably wouldn't be that far apart on the on the different methods of getting there. Mm -hmm. Right. But but Warren, humor me for a moment more on the symbolism because I understand. I mean, you know, if you try to if you're talking about contributions, in the end, it's not going to make a huge huge difference on a 1.2 trillion dollar deficit. But there are individuals in this country which you have talked about, the very wealthy one percent, who, if they did contribute more, they did pour, pay more in taxes, it would in fact make some sort of substantial uh, you know, uh, impact on the deficit. So I wonder if if we just take your symbolism and 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 we and we branch it out, not just to the lawmakers, but what about to, to hedge fund managers? What about to corporate America? Uh, what about to them? Challenge them to come out and donate more to the government. I'd rather just have the policy change. I would, I, if, if I've got a, a trillion two to work on, I, uh, I, it'd be nice to do it that way, but, but in the end... But wouldn't we, that we, make more of a statement, though? Uh, well, but, but in the end, you know, how many would do it? And, I mean, it would... Probably the emphasis in the in the press would be on how many didn't do it when you got all through. So that would not. I don't see that as a way to really get to where we need to get. Uh, it, it, uh, uh, it, 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 you, you would see far more that wouldn't do it. Unfortunately, that would do it. I mean, uh, but but on the other hand, that doesn't show polls, a lot of faith, though. Well, no, no. I mean, it, it's just, just getting it organized and calling on everybody. It, that. It would not. It would not be that effective. Yeah, the, what is effective yeah. is changing the law. <laughs> you know, one of the, uh, uh, the the concluding thoughts that Warren shared with me, and I just thought it was uh, it was excellent at, at the very end of our conversation over breakfast, was this. He said, "Scott, look, you know, you ought to get uh, uh, folks from both sides of the aisle together, agree upon some basic numbers, mm -hmm. and then then really the American people uh, should require of their representatives, Democrat and you know and Republicans." Don't run again unless you've got a plan that gets us to these numbers. Yeah, you and think, I think we need to expect that from both. You think the that would work? Well, it's it's got. That's the only way to get through this. Yeah. I mean, Betty, the idea would be, you have to, you have to come up with a plan. Now, if the plan doesn't pass, that's not your fault. I mean, you've done your best, but mm -hmm. but but there ought to be a plan. Everybody agrees, I think, that you have to get the the annual deficit down to say two points, and perhaps other people would argue for a little less. But mm -hmm. so. That's going to have to happen. Now, Scott can have one plan, somebody else can have another plan, but they're going to they're going to overlap in big, in, in, in large measure, and and you can't blame people necessarily for not getting their plan passed, but you can blame them for not having a plan. They owe for that not to doing the American something about they're it. Hired, they're hired to do that, and and Scott takes that very seriously. I um, we we had a, a discussion in part about. Uh, 
this this topic here about the ne the necessity of having a plan. Right. Um, you know, very early on, and I, I try not to frame things in partisan terms, but sometimes you have to just <laughs> say the facts or these that you don't want that I, too, doing I that know, too carefully. Well, I know because we, we do have some different <laughs> views, but I'm very proud of uh, our party for putting forth the House Republican budget. I felt really good when I put my card in the slot and pushed yes, because um, even if someone disagreed on the specifics of the plan. Right. That's okay. Good At and least there was a plan. There was a plan. Okay. And we, we, we grabbed that third rail of politics. We held on to it. Right. And, uh, and, and I, I just look at the other yeah. side, my friends on the other side, and I say, help me to understand where your plan is. You know, where is that matching? So we can go page by page and find where, where we've got some common ground. And I just, I just haven't found that yet. And, so, uh, Simpson Bowles was the plan. Yes, and a lot of people have pointed that as, as, okay. as a very sensible plan. Let me talk just specifically more about the tax reform plans. And I know, uh, you know, Buffett, you know, Warren, you've talked, you know, quite a bit about um, it, not so much the millionaires' tax, but having a larger share of the billionaires and the, and, and the very, very wealthy. The very wealthy who are paying very low rates. Very not, low not rates. The, there are very wealthy people who are paying higher rates too. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and speaking of that, we have, of course, Governor Mitt Romney, who says in the sure. next few days he's going to be releasing his tax returns. When you heard that he was paying a 15 percent tax rate, what was going through your mind? I thought that's exactly what I expected. I mean, <laughs> he, he makes his money the same way I make my money. He makes money by moving around big bucks. Not, not not by not by straining his back or you know or going to work at you know and cleaning cleaning uh, uh, toilets or whatever it may be. He makes it shoving around money. I make it shoving around money. And if you look at the 400 highest incomes in the United States, they average 220 million. Uh, something like 90 of them, as I remember, uh, are effectively unemployed. As they have no earned income, uh, mm. and that number's gone up over the years. So. That won't solve the budget deficit, what I'm talking about. Right. But the truth is that I am paying at a lower tax rate, payroll taxes plus income taxes, than when I was making $15,000 a year, you know, 60 years ago. But is it wrong that Romney is paying 15% tax? Well, it isn't. It, it's the wrong policy to have. It's not nothing wrong about him paying that. And he's not going to pay more than, 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 than the, the law requires, and, and I don't fault him for that in the least. But I do fault the law that allows him and me earning enormous sums to pay overall federal taxes at a rate that's about half what the average person in my office pays. Mm. But you do support President Obama's millionaire's tax, though, which takes your concept and broadens it out. I, uh, yeah, my, my general theory is that, that you, should have, you should have a tax system where those making millions and millions of dollars who are paying a much lower rate for one reason or another, okay. get moved up to the rate that people think they're paying in the mid-30s. Because, right, because his, but his proposal is to, is to tax those between 500 to 500, who are making 500,000 to a million dollars or more, or, or, you know, it's a lower threshold. There's about 80,000, there's about 80,000 taxpayers. I think the, there was a study made by uh, the budget office. There's about 80,000 people in that 250,000 that are a million and over. There's about 80,000 that have a very low tax rate. That's why the overall rate is so low for that right. group. And I would, I would move those people up one of whom is me, another one of whom is apparently Governor Romney, and I would move them up to where they're in the mid-30s, which is where most of the people, uh, uh, yeah, most of the people are. Mm -hmm. Congressman, would you agree? Well, here, you know, as businessmen, I think we, we do tend to, our default position is to try to find areas, areas where we do agree. <laughs> and we agree that revenue um, needs to come up. It needs to be, I think, somewhere in the 18 to 19 percent range or even the 19 to 20 percent range. Right. Uh, now the composition of that that that's really what we're discussing sure. uh, right here so but would, would you agree to taxing the rich even more in order to in order to generate more of that revenue for the government well uh, this is the issue that we, we talked about this morning <laughs> and um, I think here's here's what what I believe is that if there were a comprehensive uh, effort that, that included expenses going down into that, uh, reduced down into the somewhere in the 19 to 20 percent range for me. I think it's 20 to 21 for uh, Warren. What He's I a little mentioned. more aggressive. Yeah. Um, it's close. Yeah. I, I think we, we'd have to look at that. I've, I've okay. shared with my Republican colleagues that if you look closely at this tax code that we're under, um, it's, it's, it's yielding about 16.9 percent over the last 11 years that we've been under the current tax structure, 16.9 
percent. I don't think we can run this country on 16.9 percent. Mm -hmm. That's my view. So uh, something's got got to give, and uh, and I, I'm I'm working through that right now. Yeah, and Scott understandably says if that gives, he wants he wants something corresponding on the spending side, which I agree with 100 percent. Right. I don't think you can move up to 19 to 20 and leave guys like me. You know, still at our low rates. I, or, On the I, I, quo. I, I think I think it's wrong, and I think I, I think if I were a, a typical citizen, I would say, wait a second. You know, what's this mm -hmm. country coming to when you leave this guy alone and hit us? Right, <laughs> uh, Warren. Last time we talked, and when we were at the when we were at the New York Stock Exchange, and I was asking you a bit about what you thought about the economic policies of of, of some of the, of some of those on the Republican ticket, um, Mitt Romney, Newt Gingrich. I mean, those two have come out, um, you know, as front runners. And I want to ask you. Among those two and their economic policies, Rick Santorum as well, um, you know, do you believe that their economic policies are good for America, or do you believe that they are damaging or even dangerous, perhaps? No, I, I think that Republicans, like Democrats, have trouble breaking ranks, particularly when they're running for election. <laughs> and uh, So I don't know exactly what they would do if they got in anyway. Uh, I mean, there's... Uh, Plenty of history that says that, that the campaign promises don't end up being uh, necessarily law, but some would say it that about President Obama. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't blame Republicans for being reluctant to bend on revenues when they don't see Democrats bend on expenditure. Uh, uh, Democrats bend on expenditures. I don't blame Democrats f for the reverse, but somebody has to come forth, mm -hmm. and I think Scott, you know, could be a leader mm -hmm. on that. Uh, somebody has to come forth and say, look, one way or another, we get this down to where the deficit doesn't average more than 2% of GDP. In my view, that's sustainable. And that probably involves numbers around 19 to 20 on, on, on revenues and 20 to 21. Almost everybody agrees on that. They just don't want to be the ones that step forward. And I will cheer for the Republican or Democrat or Independent that comes forth with a plan like that. And, and then... You know, you can argue about things around the edges, mm -hmm. but then you have something that's workable. This, what we have now, is not workable. Well, what do you say to those, though, who note that Mitt Romney, obviously coming from his business background and having run private equity firm Bain Capital, uh, has better experience to run this country and this economy than President Obama? Oh, I, I, I think, you know, if you look at the leaders of the past, whether it's, you know, Roosevelt, Lincoln, you know, the great leaders, Reagan, I mean, they, they come from all different uh, backgrounds. I mean, it... it what is required uh, is a real belief in what this country can do, and it can do it, and then the ability to garner support, and it's going to require both sides of the aisle. Now that you need 60 votes in the Senate for anything important, yes. you're always going to need things from both sides. And to garner the support partly from the citizenry generally, and then partly with personal appeals and relationships with people in Congress, to get the job done. And, and it, that will happen, Betty. I mean, I'm optimistic about that happening. I just wish it would happen a little quicker than it seems to be happening. Right, I know. And you're an eternal optimist, Warren. Um, yes. Seeing, though, some of the attacks, though, on, on Mitt Romney, particularly coming from Newt Gingrich about his private equity past, uh, did you see any validity in that at all? No, I mean, I, I think that Mitt Romney did, uh, you know, he, he did things in the in the in the private sector that lots of people do and perfectly legitimate to buy businesses and i don't like buying businesses with lots of debt but there's no there's nothing immoral about it or anything of the sort and you know they uh, in some businesses they hired more people and some they let people go i don't believe in businesses having more people than are needed you know so i uh, i i see nothing specific about him i I think his tax rate is too low, but I think that's the, the fault of Congress, not, not his fault. Uh, Congressman, what do you think about the infighting that's gone on in the Republican Party and the fact that there is no strong lead right now in the GOP ticket? You know, I've been asked who I, who I endorse or who I'm favoring, and, you know, having been through a spirited primary myself, <laughs> I, I, I learned a lot about myself and uh, it was toughened up a bit by it, and I'm learning something about these, uh, these candidates every day. So, okay. Who do you uh, endorse? Oh, I haven't. You know, I, I think it's helpful to just watch and see how they handle. Uh, you know, there's some new information that's coming forth even in this campaign. Okay. You know, the primary. I will say this in the House. I have, uh, to your question of does business experience matter, I really think among the 89, you know, freshmen who came into office, as I sit next to, for example, Reed Ribble from Wisconsin, a good friend, first-time elected official, a roofer, um, is I... I do believe that having more people in Congress 
who have uh, who understand what it's like to have a banker say, "No, Scott, I can't help you." Right. I've lived this out, and I think it's been helpful to have more business people in Washington. And my own preference is to have someone who's had business experience in the White House. Well, and obviously that being being Romney, uh, Warren, you always have a really good pulse about what 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 you know what is America thinking. Um, Given the surge we've seen with Newt Gingrich, what do you think? What, what, what do you think of that? I think Romney hurt himself. <laughs> I, I think I think I think it was more Romney losing ground in the last ten days than it was Newt gaining. Although Newt made the the most of it, but but uh, I think Romney hurt himself. And in in, in I, I, I've watched all the debates. I'm self self flagellation here, but I, <laughs> I I really do enjoy watching. Them. And and on both Monday and Thursday, I mean Romney hurt himself. He he did not have a good answer on taxes, and he sh obviously the question was coming. And and, and you think and, it's the right move that he's going to release his taxes? But I don't think that determines who should be president or not. Incidentally, I mean, uh, it, you know, it, he should have done better on it. But and it hurt him a lot, I think. But. But I don't think that is the determining factor in, 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 in who should be president. Okay. All right. Warren, great to see you Thank as you. always. I always like finding an excuse to come back to your hometown here of Omaha. <laughs> and of course, the Congressman Ridgell, thank you so much uh, for joining Thank us you. as well. It sounds like it was a great breakfast. Thank we you enjoyed for, it. We had a, I we had appreciate a good... <laughs> your interest, Betty, in this whole idea of changing Congress. It, uh, it's, I think, a topic that needs to be elevated. Well, particularly for, well, I mean, for the country and for the you voters bet. as yes, well. All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen. And Margaret, I'm going to toss it back to you.